What's going on traders? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're doing well. And of course, I hope you're having a great week. So in today's lesson, we're going to be going over three examples on how you can really start to trust your higher time frame bias. There's nothing worse as a trader identifying where you perceive the market to go or anticipating where you believe the market is going to go. And then you scale down to your lower time frame and find yourself in a bit of a pickle because you're getting distracted by the lower time frame noise. In this video, I'm really going to try to instill that confidence and belief system that you need in order to become a consistent and successful trader. And after this, once you go to your charts, you should really see a major difference in what it is that you're doing on the charts. So I hope you do enjoy this video. I always say this in the beginning, if you like it, please smash that like button for me. It does a lot for the algorithm and it helps to share my videos. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Please consider subscribing. And if you're a member and you haven't turned on the notifications, make sure you do. So when I next upload a video, you know when it's uploaded. Without further ado, let's get on with the show. So traders, the first example that we're going to look at today is on gold. Now, I really love trading gold, and I know a lot of traders are a little bit fearful of trading gold, and I can understand why. It's really volatile. There's a lots of spikes to the upside and downside. But personally, as a trader, I much prefer that than slower market conditions. If I know that the symbol that I'm trading is likely to move in the period that I'm going to be trading, whether it be for the London session or the New York session, then that's the symbol that I want to be trading. Most traders look at, I'll look for slower pairs like USD JPY, Euro USD, New Zealand dollar JPY, which are completely fine to trade. But for me personally, I like that va va voom, you know, when the markets are just moving and you just know at some point today, the markets are going to start moving in your direction. And for me, that is super important. Now, the lesson that I want to teach you today is really trusting your higher time frame bias. Now, I'm not talking about your higher time frame bias from this perspective. The reason I'm not talking about your higher time frame bias from this perspective is because personally, I well, I'm a day trader. And for the majority of you, you're day traders as well, which means that the information you see in front of you is pretty irrelevant for the period that you're going to be trading. What do I mean by that? Well, let's say I come to my charts and identify in the morning that the markets are failing to break 1, uh, 1945. This is an area in the market where price has shown signs of wick projections, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what I'm looking to see here is confirmation of a bias, either to the upside or to the downside. So looking at the information here, I have two key levels in the market where I want to see price either break above or break below to start to give me an indication that guess what? If my soldiers, which are these candles, finally get over this brick wall, there's a very high chance that we can continue running higher, either back to the upside or back to the downside. So I would perceive this to be my targets. Now, when I say soldiers, I don't want you to laugh. I want you to think about this seriously because I have spoken about this in the past. But if you look at the candles, Anytime the candles find themselves tapping into a wick rejection area or an area in the market where price has created some sort of support or resistance, you will find that the markets usually react. It doesn't mean that the markets cannot break above these structures. It just means at this moment in time, the volume's either low or there's not enough momentum in the markets. So these are my little soldiers. If my soldiers are trying to break or get over this brick wall here and they're failing to do so, that's a sign for me not to take a move in the market, i.e. take a buy. Because if I take a buy, then there's a very high chance that these soldiers will smash into this brick wall. They won't be able to get over it. And then eventually, while I'm taking a buy, the markets decide to do a U-turn and go down and stop me out. So I'm looking for that the initiative, the initiative to identify that these candles can get through an area in the market. So let's create the scene here. I've just got to my trading desk and I'm preparing myself to trade. I'm looking for a signal or a sign to indicate to me where this market is going to go. Looking at the market at the moment, there's lots of wick rejections, small volume candles, bullish candles that couldn't sustain, areas in the market where prices are failing to break above or below. So for me, there's nothing going on. So I'm going to continue to wait. And as this is a 4H time frame, let's say I start my trade in that London session, I'll come back for the New York session. 
Now, look what happens when I come back to the New York session. You can see an area here in the market where price is just broken above a key level. Now, this is an indication to me that there is some sort of bullish sentiment in the market. I'm not sure if we just press two candles, there are one. I can't remember where we was at. But anyway, just work with me with this example, right? Price breaks above this structure. Now, there is a lot more information here that I can start to rely on. We can see that there's a strong momentum candle, lots of volume. And for the first time in a very long time, we've finally been able to break above 1945. With that information, what I'm then looking for is for price to give me a sign of where the market potentially could go. So once we break above this structure, I'm now thinking to myself, okay, my soldiers have crossed this wall. They've overcome the hurdle. Where could they run to before they find more trouble? Well, I'm thinking here at the structural high, because if you look to the left, we have clear traffic. Now, what I would probably do is maybe go and check some of my currency strengths and see if dollar is weakening to see if we can support why gold is going bullish. Or we can just look at this from a logical perspective now and say, well, look, the markets have been pushing bullish for a very long period of time. What you don't want to do is create a story before you get the evidence. Get the evidence first, which is a candle breaking above the structure, then build the story behind it. Because what happens if you try to um, build the story before the evidence is that you become a storyteller. You'll start skating down. You'll start looking for opportunities that don't make sense. And then you'll find yourself in some trouble. So now we're building a bias here. We're understanding what's happening in the markets. And in the back of my mind, I'm thinking to myself, OK, great. This candle closed bullish above 1945 for the first time in a long time. We've closed above strong volume candle, starting to see weakness in the dollar. Maybe it's an opportunity for me to start moving in. I have to make a decision right now if I'm going to enter the markets. And that decision is, am I looking for buys or am I looking for sells? And I think it's very convincing to say with the evidence that we have here that we're going to be looking for buys. Once you have this bias, traders, make sure you stick to it because the behavior of the market at this moment in time while you're sitting down to trade is indicating to you a bullish sentiment. You only have to make two decisions. Is the market going to go bearish or is the market going to go bullish? Two decisions when you're going to take a trade. If you're not going to take a trade, then the third decision is walk away. At this moment in time, I think it's very convincing that we're looking for bias. So I have this bias. I'm locked in. I know what I'm looking for, and I know what I want to do when I scale down. Now it's time to scale down to our entry time frame. So traders, we're now on the 30-minute time frame. We've scaled down. We can now start to validate what we have identified on a higher time frame basis. We can see that the overall behavior of this market on the 30-minute time frame is now indicating what? a bullish sentiment. If we remove the candles here, you'll start to see that we got a formation of highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and potentially not a higher high here yet, but we got the sentiment. What does that mean for us? Well, that means that what we've identified on the lower time frames is now being validated, sorry, on the higher time frames is now being validated on the lower time frames. What do we need to look for? Well, we're anticipating price to come back to the highs. We have the area in the market where we wanted to see price break above for the first time. This is 1945. The big question here is this. Are we concerned about this information here to the left? Well, from a 15 minute perspective, it looks like a key level where price can react from and price is not going to continue bullish. But should we be scared of that? Well, no, because again, what is happening right here is not relevant to us at this moment in time. What is, is the information that we've just gathered which is price breaking above this area for the first time and closing strong bullish. This is irrelevant. This is what's relevant. Is this key, rele key level relevant? Well, of course, we want to see price continue to trade above it. So what do we do in an instance like this? Well, we continue to wait for the market to give us signs that price is holding these levels, that price is showing signs that it is failing to break and close below these levels. Always remember, traders, that this is an area in the market. So even if price does peak through it, I don't want you to get too fanatical about, oh, price is just broken back through. Is it going to continue to push up? Is it going to continue to push down? Let's keep it real. Does it look like price has broken back below this level with signs that it's going to continue going bearish? Or at this stage, after this candle closes, does it look like price is pushing bullish and about to continue bullish? Well, I know what I would pick. Price is broken back into this level or maintain this level 
closed bullish and I anticipate it to continue to grow bullish. Now, what all I have in the back of my head is my high time frame bias, which is a market sentiment is bullish. So what does that mean for me? Well, if this candle closes bullish at this key level, can I take this trade? Well, absolutely. Why not? Because at the end of the day, even if the retest doesn't look pretty, if the retest looks like it's breaking out or breaking back into structures, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's an indecision candle, a pin bar, a strong bullish engulfing candle. What we have in the back of our mind is a belief system that the momentum and the bias of today is that the that gold is strong, the previous candle closed bullish, and there's a much higher chance that price will continue higher. So with that information, we can take this trade. But what happens is something happens like this. When price comes back to these key levels and you don't enter the trade, what can you do? Can you take the trade? Let's say you didn't get in here. Can you take this trade? Well, absolutely. What you've got to continue to remember in the back of your mind, traders, is this. The level where the market broke is this information here. Where price came back for the retest was this information here. Just because you didn't get in early, it doesn't mean you can't take a trade. If the market creates wild swings where it comes back to key levels and potentially retest them, it means you can still get into the trades. Again, all we're doing is locking in the back of our mind what the high time frame bias has told us, which is bullish. So if we wanted to take a trade and it looks something like this, could we do that? What do you think? Could we do something like this? Absolutely. Because all we're doing again is just following simple structure and the momentum of the higher time frame bias, which is indicated to us a bullish sentiment. And now we're taking advantage of intraday structures, let's say even just on the five minute time frame, which is indicating this high, higher low in anticipation of this new higher high. So if we wanted to take this trade, would this be completely fine? Absolutely. Now, traders, does they get to a point where you have to say to yourself, well, when do I draw the line? Well, of course, you have to always remember in the back of your mind, the sentiment that you gather from the higher time frame allows you to enter anywhere you want as long as the market is moving bullish and giving you bullish signs. Even if there's an instance where you take a trade and you get stopped up break even or you don't take the trade and you get in later using more scaling down techniques, you have to always remember that the higher time frame bias is indicating that bullish sentiment so you can buy. But what becomes a problem is when you start to think that you can enter the markets at later stages like this. Because once the market has pushed, you have to always remember in the back of your mind, there is a higher chance of that higher low pullback before the continuation. So if you decide to take a trade at a later stage, then there's a very high chance that the market will pull back, or maybe not in this instance, but the market will pull back to create that higher low before continuing bullish. Meaning that if you're using intraday stop losses to hide your stop loss behind, then there's a higher chance that the higher time frame will create that deeper pullback to stop you out. So the point is this. If you want to enter, make sure that you start to identify where the sentiment has shifted, which is this information here. Look for the areas in the market where you can start to see first signs of bullish sentiment, even on breakouts, even at later stages. It doesn't matter. Not too late, obviously. And then press the button. The only thing that you will have problems with during this, during uh, doing this is that you get too greedy by placing your stop losses in places that it shouldn't be. Of course, your safest stop loss is always going to be at the bottom of where the market has created that initial move. But most of us don't want to be in a trade that looks something like this because then the range of our TP is much larger. I mean, profits are profits at the end of the day, but we do want a more favorable risk toward ratio strategy. So this example here was pretty decent. I hope you understand that. This is all derived from that information from the 4H timeframe, which was the information that we've identified which was price breaking above this level here and then showing signs of this bullish sentiment, sorry, showing signs of this bullish sentiment in anticipation for price to continue back higher to a major key level. That is all we're doing. And we just got it stuck in our head that when we scale down, all we're looking for in this instance is for bullish behavior. So you could enter anywhere you want here, 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 here. It doesn't matter. We anticipate the targets to come back to the highs. Some days you'll win a trade, some days you'll lose. But if you follow this process, you'll have a lot more success. And of course, we're just keeping it stupid, stupid, simple. We're doing nothing but just following the high time frame bias. Let's look at our second example. 
So traders, just before we look at our second example, I just want to let you know, for those that don't know yet, I've just launched a second 12-week workshop, which is designed to take traders through a step-by-step -step process, building on a two-candle theory concept that I've developed over the last year, layer by layer. Now, I know it can take a lot of traders a long time to find consistency, but with the 12-week workshop, what my plan is, and I'm super confident about it, is that in the next 90 days or less with what you will learn from the 12 week workshop, you will be able to change your trading around forever. Now, it's been specifically designed to undo and clear all the noise that you're distracted by and really aid you in learning a systematic rule based strategy that has a zero discretionary approach meaning that there are no variations so you don't get confused and you know exactly what you need to be doing each step of the way. Now, my current workshop is now five weeks in. This is the first 12-week uh, workshop group and the results have been absolutely incredible and we're not even halfway through yet. It's really designed for those that need someone to hold their hands, that need a solid plan to follow each week. And the objective of the 12-week workshop is to get each one of you to a stage that you are booming with confidence and you really have faith that by the end of it, if not throughout it, you can take and pass, let's say your funded challenges so that you can get funded. And that's really my aim in the 90 days. What's in it for me? Legacy. To see my people make, make get results and make it. So if you're not part of the 12 week workshop and you really need that extra support and guidance and you need someone to hold your hand, Get in on the 12 week workshop. It's an investment you will not regret. And I can promise you that by the end of the 90 days, you will find yourself in a very different place as a trader. So we have limited spots available, still some left. If you're not in get in, the link will be in the description. So let's take a look at our second example on pound JPY. Looking at the overall sentiment of this market traders, you can see that the market is showing signs of a bearish sentiment. I've come to my charts. It's the New York session. I can identify an area in the market where price is failing to break above. We can now start to build the story after we get the evidence that the sentiment of the market is now shifting bearish with these structural lower lows and lower highs. I can see an area in the market where my candles or my soldiers might find a problem. So I want to mark that area. And then I want to find an area where I believe that these candles can come back to if they continue bearish. So now that I have this information, what does that leave me to do? Well, I have the bias in my head. I'm going to stick to it. I know I'm looking for sales. I can see the behavior is bearish. It's time to, time to now scale down to my entry time frame. So traders, we're in our entry time frame, which is now the five minute time frame. You can see the previous trend of the market was pushing bullish. You can see areas in the market where price is now taking out lower lows and lower highs. You have a nice break and retest here, but we're not worried about uh, worried about that. What we are focusing on is this behavior at the time that we come to our charts in anticipation of price to continue back down to some structural lows. Am I concerned about this information to the left or just like you saw in gold? Absolutely not. I do not care. What I am now uh, fixated on is the fact that the behavior of the market is now bearish. Let's say I'm getting signs of yen strength and power weakness. Sentiment of the market is changing from an intraday perspective. The high time frame analysis has just broken below 160.49. And now I'm just looking for evidence where price can tell me where I believe it can go. Now we can see here evidence of the market doing what? Well, we had a continuation of that bearish sentiment. We may know, may know, may have not got an entry here for whatever reason, but look where, what we're starting to see now. From an intraday perspective, we're starting to see a really nice formation of a lower, lower, lower high. Don't let FOMA make you jump in here, guys. There are techniques you can use to get in here, but we're not going to talk about them today. But what do we see here? Well, prices come back to a, uh, a level in the market where price is previously broken. I can illustrate that on the one minute time frame for you so that you can identify this as a break and retest. We identify a really nice, strong bearish close. We can place our stop loss above this. And then what can we do? We can go for our targets. In an instance like this, traders, what we're doing again is we're just simply following our high time frame bias. We're fixated on the fact that the sentiment is illustrating a bearish sentiment. The time that I plan to trade now is, let's say, a two hour or three hour window. And I want to sit down and look for any pattern that resembles that kind of sentiment 
of that sentiment that I've gathered from the higher time frames. I'm not going to change it no matter what. I'm not going to start to allow FOMO to get in the way or to make me take trades late into the push phase move. I'm not going to start taking buyers of support levels. I'm just going to wait patiently for the market to create structures that I'm familiar with. And as I said, if you go to the one minute, this is a nice deep pullback into a previous resistance area. We can call this a double top. And then I'm looking to take a trade. What you want to focus on is your higher time frame buy sentiment worry about your patterns last look for the evidence first then create the story with the evidence that you've gathered not the other way around so that's example number two pretty simple this one and what we'll do is take a look at one more okay traders for our third and final example we're now looking at euro usd now you can see here that the market has been pushing bearish for a long period of time we have a support level here where price is just tapped into around 0.965. Look what happened when price came here before, a really sharp rally to the upside. We've had a very strong push phase into this key level. And all of a sudden, after this strong bearish push into this level, what do we have here? We have a very strong bullish candle. I've just sat down to my charts for the Asian session. I can see the current behavior of the market is bullish. What am I looking for, traders? I'm looking for a continuation of that bullish behavior with evidence that we've gathered here and then the story that we build up here with this being a strong level in the market where we anticipate price to react from and the story that we build up here after this strong push phase anticipating an exhaustion even if it's going to continue bearish we now are fixated on looking for buys let's scale down to our entry time frame so traders now we're on our one minute time frame we have the overall sentiment in the back of our mind. We're fixated on buys. Let's continue to add confluences. A structure in the market where price was pushing bearish. We start to fail to break the structures. We finally break the brick wall here. And now what do we have? We have a bullish sentiment where the market is now continuing to push bullish. What are we looking for when we're down here? We are just looking for evidence that the market sentiment has changed and that there is a high chance that price can continue to push bullish versus pushing, uh, pushing bearish. We have a nice level here in the market where price has made a double bottom with a really nice strong engulfing candle. And now this is an opportunity for us to take a trade. What we want to do, traders, is just have it in the back of our mind constantly what the higher time frame has told us. And that's an indication that the sentiment of the market is pushing bullish. The intraday structures continue to illustrate that. Traders, you're going to suffer drawdown. Don't get fixated on that. Price is going to push in your direction and come back. It doesn't matter. What you are focused on is what you have identified from the high time frame bias. Look to support that with early signs of bullish candles, whatever it may be that supports the reason why you're going to enter that trade. Do not get, do not get distracted by the noise and the patterns and the processes that happen down here. Stay fixated on what is happening on that higher time frame which was an indication of price failing to break this structure, bullish sentiment in anticipation for price to continue bullish. Even if this structure will continue bearish and this is the lower high and it continues bearish, because you're using scaling down techniques, you can get in and out of the markets before that even happens. Wow. There was a mouthful. Traders, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you got the point. Maybe we didn't have the best perfect examples, but nothing in the market is perfect. And I just want to share with you some raw, raw examples of what you can expect. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about uh, much more about this. I really just want you to go through this video again, understand the fundamentals of what it is I'm teaching, understand that following your high time frame bias when you sit down at your charts is the most important thing that you can do. Your job now is to go and take 100 trades following the fundamentals and principles that I've just taught you. Practice and identify what patterns work best for you during what times on what pairs. And then trust me, just trust me when I say this, you will start to see consistency over time. Keep your heads up, stay focused. And as I always say, continue to trust the process. And maybe I should have said like, subscribe and turn on notifications. Take care. Thank you.